Hey everybody, welcome back to Gem Mint Collectibles. I'm back with another Every Omnibus Release So Far video. Man, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, when I first started doing them, I figured these are videos that I would do when I didn't really have anything else going on. But recently, with all the statues that have been coming in, the recent reads, uh, the live show, I, uh, I had a lot of different content. But chilling here on a Sunday, not much going on. Figured we'd do Star Wars. So, there are there's six Star Wars books and a little honorable mention that I'm going to get uh, into down here. Now, confession time, I didn't grow up being the biggest Star Wars fan, but over the years, I've gotten into the universe, I've, you know, obviously watched all the movies multiple times, and I got into these comics because I wanted to dig more into, into the, the mythos of the Star Wars universe. Haven't read these yet, but this Star Wars Vader, uh, Darth Vader Omnibus, I think that might be the next book that I read. Anyway, with that being said, here's uh, Star Wars Volume 1, uh, which is the original Marvel Comics series. Um, the first, these three volumes have variant covers, but none of them were really like more sought out than the next, so I just kind of went with the ones that I thought looked the coolest. So, this collects Star Wars 1 through 44 and Annual 1 from the 1977 series. Oh, cool. So, it's got like a black cover with like a very dark gray Star Wars logo and Luke vs. Vader fight. So... I don't know. I mean, I definitely open these because they're not sealed, but I don't know if I stretch these spines out or not. I understand that these can be very campy. I mean, they're Bronze Age stories, but uh, I wanted to see, you know, like more about the the mythos, more of the, um, just, you know, delve more into the universe. So everyone's familiar with this cover, Star Wars number one. Let's take a look at some of the artwork in here. So yeah, very Bronze Age stuff. <clears throat> Definitely interested in, in it. You know, I just just haven't gotten around to reading these yet. You know, some people will say, like, hey, you bought you bought all these books. You don't even know what they're about. I mean, I bought this library so that I would have um, a shitload of books to read when I was bored, you know? I, I kind of also looked at it like, hey, man, I'll always have them. It's my retirement plan, you know? I can sit back and just read these books, and I'll have years of uh, content, you know? These uh, books... <clears throat> they're probably still available on in stock trades. So cover price on this was one twenty five. In stock trades, you probably get it fifty percent off. Um, somebody actually gave me a good idea. They're like during these every omnibus videos, you should be given the cover price. So that's what I'll start doing. Um, omnibus usually run like seventy five bucks to one twenty five, and it's not uh, determined based on the page amount. There's a lot of factors that go into pricing of an omnibus. The licensing has a big deal to do with it. If Marvel owns the license, um, it'll be a cheaper book. If there's other people, other parties involved, like Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, or Star Wars, it's going to be on that higher end. Also, omnibus can be more expensive, like the 125 range, if the contents have never been uh, available in a collected edition, have never been cleaned up to fit this format. So, the Golden Age Superman Volume 5 is the highest priced uh, of, those, of that line of books because it's the first time they had to clean up those pages. So, some food for thought there from your boy, Jem. Dope cover, Boba Fett. <clears throat> cover gallery for y'all. Volume 2 collects uh, Star Wars 45 through 78 and Annual 2. $125 um, cover price. Again, don't go paying cover price unless it's out of print and you have to have it. 
because in stock trades will have you for half off. And Amazon will probably have good prices too. So very similar uh, to the volume one as far as the hardcover goes. Again, this is called relaxing the spine. You want to evenly distribute the weight of the pages so that it doesn't damage the, the binding. You got you got to relax, basically. You just got to relax. This is sewn binding, though, so I don't know how necessary it is. I think that's more for a glued binding kind of thing. Similar artwork, but it's getting a little more refined, a little more colorful. I noticed that first volume, the colors were very pale. But we're looking colorful here. Your boy Lando. <clears throat> they haven't collected the current Marvel run in omnibus format yet, except for the Vader stuff. But I'd be interested in that for sure. The modern stuff, you know, a little bit easier to read. More modern, obviously. So that's volume two. And the last volume of the original Marvel US run, volume three, which collects issues 79 through 107 in annual three. Also, Return of the Jedi one through four, plus some material from Pizzazz one through 16, Star Wars Weekly from the UK, uh, 60, <clears throat> 94 through 99, and 104 through 115, plus Empire Strikes Back Monthly, UK, 149, 151, and 153 through 157, and Star Wars Monthly, UK, 159. Jeez, they pack a lot of shit into this. That's your volume three. The cover gallery. Same price tag, 125. Lightsaber. It's hard to see this because it's so dark the way that they do that. So, yeah, I mean, Star Wars is cool, man. You got space stuff with the all the ships, the different planets and races. And then you have the Jedi. You have the Force, the dark side, the lightsabers, you know, uh, the blasters. You know, it's, there's a lot of cool stuff in Star Wars. I think as a kid, I, I wasn't really into it. Because um, the original trilogy looked so dated compared to modern movies at the time. Um, but, you know, as I got older, I appreciated it more. The prequels, uh, I was a huge fan of episode three. Um, episode one, I didn't like, really. I mean, I liked that it focused around Anakin and he becomes Darth Vader. I thought that was very cool. Um, I didn't like the pod racing stuff, which some people liked. And I didn't really like the... Um, I didn't like Jar Jar Binks, that character. Then episode two was pretty cool. I like how they established that the stormtroopers were clones. And that made sense that there's like this huge army of clones. And that's why they're all whatever. Um, but it was a, a very slow. The Anakin arc I like though. With Padme and Obi-Wan. So the art in these Star Wars books, I'm liking how they look, man. And you get into this black and white. So this must be from those Star Wars Weekly stuff. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Probably an adaptation from the movie or whatever. <clears throat> uh, Force Awakens. I You know, I enjoyed Force Awakens as a casual fan. Um, I did feel like it was... Very similar to uh, episode four, New Hope. Um, I didn't think Kylo Ren was as good as a villain as Vader, obviously. And I don't think Rey was as good as a hero as Luke. And then um, The Last Jedi, I don't know. I just kind of felt like a lot of the buildup from The Force Awakens, there wasn't really good payoff for that. They kind of grazed over all the big questions from The Force Awakens. Now we have Star Wars, the Marvel UK collection. So does this double dip at all? Because this collects Star Wars Weekly 60, 
So it is this. 94 through 99 and 104 through 115. So that double dips. This has Empire Strikes Back monthly, 149 and 151, which this has as well. And 153 through 157, which this has as well. Star Wars monthly, 159. Yep. Ewoks annual 18, uh, 1989 and material from Pizzazz 10 through 16. And UK exclusive covers, pinups, articles, and more. So basically, this whole thing double dips from volume three. This has a $100 uh, price tag on it. And I kind of wish I would have known. <laughs> That's my bad. I didn't do my homework on this one. This book straight double dips. Anyway, what are you going to do? You win some, you lose some. I still would have bought it anyway just because I'm a completionist. But yeah, you get a lot of you get a lot of extras is what I'm looking like in the back here. So we'll, let's go over the extras. So you got the same weekly stuff, right? The black and white um, comics. That's cool. So you get you get this kind of stuff. like newspaper articles and stuff. So if you're on a budget and you already have volume three, don't buy the UK uh, Marvel collection for Star Wars Omnibus. Pin up. There's a pin up gallery in the back. Pretty cool stuff. Cover gallery. All right, so that's that. All right, then you got a book, <clears throat> Star Wars, Droids and Ewoks, Omnibus. This is one of those books that I was, one of the last ones that I was going to collect, so... When I had the majority of the Marvel Omnibus, there was a few left that I didn't have, like the Muppets, uh, this book, uh, Women of Marvel, Marvel 75 Years, like a lot of those collected edition kind of books that I told myself, I, I don't, you don't need it. You don't need it, Jim. Don't buy it. And, you know, I ended up just ended up buying them. This has a $75 cover price. It collects uh, Ewoks 1 through 14, Droids 1 through 8. And material from Ewoks UK Annual 1989. It looks very cartoony. But again, the completionist in me couldn't pass it up. <coughs> Take a look here. Yeah, very, very cartoony looking stuff. You know, so will I ever get to this? I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe one day. The art's kind of similar to the Archie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, though, which I do like. We'll see. Droids and Ewoks, right? So... Light-hearted stuff. Who am I kidding? I'll probably never read it. <laughs> anyway, so now we're going to get into um, more modern Star Wars stuff. Um, this is the um, Marvel Darth Vader uh, Omnibus, which... I actually do have this in the two oversized hardcovers, but an omnibus came out, so, you know, you know the rest. Um, I'm thinking about doing something with those oversized hardcovers and doing a giveaway or who knows. But this is supposed to be a really good run, you know. I, I definitely, uh, it's on my radar to read, like, next. So, Darth Vader, 
contains uh, from the 2015 series, issues 1 through 25 with Annual 1, Star Wars Vader Down 1, and Star Wars 13 and 14 from that ongoing uh, series. I think Vader Down is supposed to be like really dope. So first wraparound cover of the Star Wars books. So, yeah, these videos, like I said, more of a reference guide. This is every um, Star Wars omnibus that have been released uh, thus far. Uh, I'm not sure of any solicitations for a future Star Wars omnibus. I'm not really familiar. Uh, not, not that I'm not familiar. I haven't heard of anything. I don't think they've um, announced this, you know, the, the Star Wars run for omnibus format. But I would definitely get it. You can see this stuff is just much more modern. Modern stuff. <clears throat> I might check this out next. Alright, so those are all the omnibus. So this next book, um, the reason why I brought it out is because on In Stock Trades, this was solicited as an omnibus. Star Wars, Canaan, uh, Canaan, and then uh, when we started getting it in hand, we realized it was just an oversized hardcover. I guess we should have noticed by the page count, but sometimes Omnibus can have, um, you know, a lower page count. Like look at the McFarland Spider-Man Omnibus or Miss Marvel or Devil Dinosaur. You know, some some of them have smaller page counts. This is from the. Um, the Dark... No, not the... I guess it's not the Dark Horse. This is Canaan 1 through 12. Okay, so this was from 2015 as well, I assume. All right, anyway, here's the cover. Do people say it's good? Also has a wraparound cover. So this would really be the first wraparound cover. Well, it's not an omnibus. Anyway, this came out before the Vader book. Star Wars... When was this? The last pad, uh, Padawan 1 through 6 and Kanan 7 through 12. First printing 2016. Anyway, all right. So there you go. Every Star Wars omnibus. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, by the way, this had a cover price of thirty-five bucks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I've been a little behind on these. I know I've had some requests to do every Teen Titans omnibus. I can still do Justice League, Marvel Monsters. So I, someone someone uh, gave a good suggestion because there's two monster busts for the Silver Age books. And that can include Werewolf by Night, Tomb of Dracula, and any other monster books I might have. Man Thing. Um, yeah, so there's still a few of these I could do. Every Turtles. I don't have every Turtles hardcover, but I have the full run of you know the original series uh, and, and the ongoing series. But I don't have like annual 2012 or anything like that. Anyway, um, thanks for checking out Gem and Collectibles. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you get updates when I uh, post a video. Find me on Facebook, uh, Gem and Collectibles, uh, and like and follow that page so you can be up to date when, I, uh, when I'm promoting like a live show or what have you. And speaking of which, the first live show, Gem and Collectibles Live, will be happening tomorrow, Monday, um, at... Damn, what time is it going to be? 3 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm Mountain Time. 3 p.m. Mountain Time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. So check me out. Me and um, Milton the Manimal, we're going to be talking about 
Batman the New 52. We're going to have the full run in singles. We're going to have the absolute out. We're going to talk about it, do Q&A, and uh, talk about how it leads into the current Dark Knight's metal run. But that's all for me. I've been Gem Mint. Thanks for watching. Stay minty.